Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Laura Nissen. I'm a professor in the School of Social Work and a proud member of the PSU Futures Collaboratory. Uh, welcome to today's webinar, Looking Ahead to PSU's Future Now, sponsored by uh, members of the PSU Futures Collaboratory. Um, we welcome you at a time of deep complexity, transition, and opportunity in the world around us. And we're going to talk uh, about that uh, in a little while. Uh, we'd like to welcome you with an acknowledgement of the land that our university uh, sits on. Portland State University is located in the heart of downtown Portland, Oregon and Multnomah County. Today we honor indigenous people whose traditional and ancestral homelands we stand on, the Multnomah, Kathlamet, Clackamas, Tumwater, Watlala, Bands of the Chinook, Tualatin, Kapaya, and many other indigenous nations of the Columbia River. It's important to acknowledge these ancestors of this place and to recognize that we are here because of the sacrifices forced upon them. In remembering these communities, we honor their legacy, their lives, and their descendants. And I would add, we honor their futures thinking um, and a deep bow to uh, indigenous people and their, um, their great vision around protecting and sending love into the future. Uh, so, uh, we're excited to be with you today. Uh, is our first slide up, Todd? I am very happy to be joined uh, by members of the PSU uh, Futures Collaboratory. And um, we are uh, going to be talking with you about a number of topics. Um, we would like to invite you to submit questions to presenters by using the Q&A feature in Zoom. Selected questions will be read aloud and addressed by um, all of us as we're able during a Q&A period. Uh, On-topic questions will be posted and answered on the, on the Futures Collaboratory website, which will be posted in the chat, um, including those that may not be addressed in the session due to limited time. I'm pleased to uh, welcome um, collaboratory members, Andre, Andres Guzman, uh, who's the coordinator for equity, diversity, and inclusion in the College of Education. Angela Jackson, who's the executive director of entrepreneurial and industry engagement. Sheila Maluli, who is learning center manager. Oh, <laughs> learning center manager in our intensive English language program and a doctoral student here at PSU. Uh, myself and Todd Rosensteel, who's the associate dean of College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. And as we get started this morning, um, everybody wanted to just have a moment to express their own brief reflection of, of what it's felt like and meant to them to be part of the collaboratory this year. So you could get a little window um, into our experience and our lessons and our reflections. Andres, could you begin, please? Hi there, yes. So my name is Andres Guzman or Andres Guzman. And I always say in the Anglo-Saxon version of the word, because I think that that's important. <laughs> and I use he, him, his pronouns and I just wanted to share very quickly that this group has been really, really energizing um, during these very difficult times and the times that PSU is entering as well. And I think the thing that I really took away from this group was the collaborative efforts that leveraged all of our strengths and skills so beautifully and intimately. And I, it's just an opportunity that I'm so thankful for. So I just wanted to, to say that very quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Andres. Angela? Hi, uh, welcome everybody. I also just want to talk to you how this experience has really transformed me personally. I come to PSU from somewhat of an outsider perspective. I come from entrepreneurial uh, pursuits, not as an academic. And in some, some ways, I feel like an outsider to academia. And in some ways, I feel that uh, I found my people with the, the Futures Collaboratory. In part, that's because so much of the discipline of Futures is so entrepreneurial and so like entrepreneurialism. Uh, so I hope to continue to contribute and also translate some of this work to our community, businesses, industry, and partners outside of the university. Thank you. Thank you. Sheila? My name is Sheila Maluli. I use she, her, hers. Um, this has been one of the most engaging and transformational learning um, experiences I've had um, the honor of engaging in. It's really given me a language to reframe what I already had. 
um, being a lifelong naturalist, I was that kid who picked up the slug and licked them. Um, starting out in biology, I have active systems thinking. Um, also going on to become a fine artist, I have a lot of background in design thinking. And futures thinking really gave me a new language to combine um, design justice, systems thinking, and uh, seek new ways of educating future generations to tackle the very complex issues and problems that, that we can't solve through one lens. We definitely need to have a plural lens and plural voices and plural agency. So I'm exceedingly grateful. Um, this experience has actually changed the focus of my doctoral thesis, and I'm excited to see where it takes me. Thank you. Thank you. Todd? Hi, everybody. This is Todd Rosenstiel. Um, I'm, a, I'm a biology professor. And the thing, this, this year has been such a gift for me in terms of, as Sheila said, give me some language around futures. It turns out as a biologist, someone who's also really grew up in the ecology and evolution world, I've sort of been pre-adapted to sort of be a futurist because I think about how organisms change and evolve over a sort of deep time. And as we all know, we're at a moment in, in the evolution of even in higher ed where we, we have some real questions about what's going to either enable or limit our adaptability to future environments. And so this is something that has been a great inspiration for me. And just as also a point of pride, I think, for PSU, because of the many things I've been involved in over the years um, that have been at PSU, this, this collaboratory feels authentically uh, inclusive in that um, the, the, those individuals, just the folks, the staff, the positions that have been brought into the collaboratory uh, across the university give us really the, the necessary lens we have to sort of look forward to the future. So I'm super appreciative. Thank you. I would add, you know, my, my joy of this really just um, operates around the, the idea that the future we want doesn't show up fully formed, a great quote by uh, futurist Amy Webb, we have to shape it. And to, to shape it, we have to imagine it. And uh, at a time of such incredible change, when so many things feel like they are emerging and transforming around us, it can sometimes feel like we don't have control. Sometimes we hold on too tight to the way it used to be, or we're afraid of what might come next. The truth is we're all creating, co-creating the future all the time. And in this moment of history, things are possible that weren't possible just a few months ago. Um, how will we take advantage of that opportunity? So today, next slide, we're gonna talk with you about um, scenarios and some of the work we've done um, in scenarios. By the way, thank you everybody, that was awesome on the panel. Um, we'll be rotating through speakers, but I just share a couple of slides here to talk about scenarios and why we chose to include this as a, a place to talk with you about and give you a little window on our work. We're also going to talk about some initial recommendations that we have, which was one of our uh, touchstones uh, for the year was to end the year with some um, recommendations back to President Percy uh, about what we think would be required to make PSU future, future ready. We started um, stretching our thinking by using scenarios, which is a common um, thinking tool, uh, stretching tool in futures work. Um, it grew out of the idea that strategic planning has really dominated the way we think about and imagine how to plan for what comes next. And probably everyone on this call has been involved in numerous strategic plans over the years. Uh, and sometimes they make us groan. But the truth is strategic planning is important and people do get further with a plan than without one. But there's a lot of buts. Um, strategic plans have limitations. They generally over invest in one lane, one assumption about what will happen and under invest in possibilities beyond that. So scenario works, scenario works helps people intentionally, creatively, push back on single stories, uh, really exemplify that idea that the future is plural. Single stories uh, that, that show up in strategic plans tend to be dominated by the interests of powerful voices, and they intentionally um, don't seek out um, underexplored possibilities. It's very discovery-based. It requires plurality and multiple perspectives. It helps to identify and clarify more options for a preferred future in a practical way. That's why we do this. What's the future we want? But it also helps to recognize dimensions of futures we don't want and how to incorporate all of these ideas for moving forward. It's inherently more agile and results uh, 
in, in a kind of creativity and also expansiveness that strategic and, and agility that strategic planning on its own uh, won't. The ingredients for good uh, uh, strategic, or excuse me, scenario work are signals, trends, and, and deep imagination, along with that plurality of visions. Next slide, please. So um, lots of resources. And if you download these slides, and I hope you will after this session, there's a few you can cut and paste from these links and visit several different places where um, future of higher ed is being discussed in deep and broad ways right now. There's so many discussions about higher education being in a transformational space. But also we threw a few others up here, a futurist Leah Zadie we've done some work with, or a home base that I do a lot of work with, the Institute of the Future. Lots and lots of work going on about what is the future of the world post uh, Black Lives Matter? What's the future of the world post COVID-19? What, what is the future that might blossom or might crash as a result of work that needs to be done. Uh, so urge you to, um, to check into those and just expand beyond. But for today, uh, next slide please. Um, we're gonna stick with a classic scenario form and tell you a little bit about the work we did in this space. The classic scenario form has four different aspects. Things get better, we try some things, they work, they're successful, and we, we, ex we go along in the direction that we were hoping to before all this disruption. Things get worse, collapse occurs, and our focus area ends or is totally derailed. Things stay the same, and some call this conservation, and I, I call this the muddling along scenario where we just kind of keep lopping along the way we have been. Or transformation occurs, something almost unimaginable happens and causes us to rethink everything we do and everything we do it, and it turns into something entirely new. Futurists categorize these scenarios as possible, plausible, preferred, probable, plausible, and, and even preposterous. Next slide, please. Um, I'm going to turn this over to Sheila now, who's going to tell you uh, some more about our work and how we shaped um, these ideas uh, playfully, mindfully, uh, but with great heart and great um, ideas, great thinking. Sheila? Thank you, Laura. Yeah, I just want to mention that there's this unusual cognitive effect where most of our brains think of ourselves in the future as a stranger. And what this really means is that when we do scenarios work, we're considering futures from a place that's not our comfort zone. It's really not the comfort zone of, of anyone. Um, and this is best done collaboratively. In our um, case, this was accompanied with laughter, games, critical question, tears, hand wringing, and a lot of emotions. It really made us feel deeply. I'm going to tell you four stories next. Next slide, please. The first story is a story about improvement. And this improvement does happen, in fact, because some sad things happen. Many small local colleges close. Um, while we do have COVID immunity, perhaps a vaccine in around 18 months, and perhaps more widespread uh, immunity around the globe in perhaps three years, we're very reticent to get on planes. Uh, the focus has really shifted to local ecologies and systems. People want to stay close to their families, their mutual aid systems, and folks decide to really enroll in PCC and PSU. We're we're able to knock out a seamless transition and in fact PSU doubles in size in a fairly rapid amount of time. This is our improve. Moving on to collapse. Um, the most painful story. So the public health crisis intensifies. The virus evolves different strains. We find that folks that do have immunity initially aren't protected and are reinfected. This leads to a massive economic downturn globally and intergenerational effects. And generally, community life stalls out. It's sort of paralyzed indefinitely. PSU then struggles. Uh, we have adjustment fatigue, a lot of turnover. There's involuntary and unplanned reduction of scope and scale and a lot of pain, death and suffering. Moving on to the next one, the conserve scenario. In this scenario, the cups and the furloughs continue. 
um, careful restraint is prioritized. Uh, programs are evaluated, which are under enrolled, which are over enrolled. There are massive cuts. There's a widespread lack of, of staffing and teaching capital and we're lacking in resources. And yet, despite these circumstances, some good work is done and we carry on institutionally um, surrounded by many challenges. And then finally, the next scenario is the transform. Imagine PSU's curriculum is completely reimagined. We decide to set the central organizing principle is the world's most challenging and pressing interdisciplinary issues. We prioritize planetary and human health and well being. Um, and instead of operating out of the usual silos, uh, the curriculum is largely informed by design justice thinking and foresight thinking. And these are applied to the issues that our faculty and learners care most about transforming in our world. PSU then becomes known for this incredibly transformative work and this becomes our future legacy. Um, we're going to transition now from looking at these scenarios to recommendations that are linked to them. And I'm going to hand this over to Angela Jackson. Thank you, Sheila. So we do this work um, because A, it stretches us and it makes us think in new ways as Sheila and Laura pointed out. But we also do it because it's innately practical. Um, so if you look at this axis here, if you can go back one for a second, Todd. Um, you know, the world's getting better or it's getting worse. I have influence and agency to the right, or I mean to the left, or I don't to the right. Clearly, uh, being up and to the left in this graph is where people come with choices and a sense of agency around their future. So uh, I think this work that we did together led us all to, you know, in some cases from despair to extreme hope. Uh, go ahead, next slide. In fact, it, it's made all of us think uh, about power in a new way. Um, and I'd like to suggest a new narrative for PSU. It's not a scarcity narrative. We're powerful. We have everything we need. We're empowered. We're perfectly suited for this moment. And that has to do with so what has changed even just in the last uh, six to nine months? PSU's inherently networked versus hierarchical structure when compared to similar institutions. I'm sure there's work to do as well. Uh, how power is held by many, uh, not just the one or the few. Uh, this ethic about radical transparency versus competitive competition and closed, closed loop. And the fact that we are co-creating this future together um, not just with the Futures Collaboratory, but we hope broad, more broadly at PSU. Next slide. And it looks a little bit like this. Uh, I think part of why this work spoke to me so much is this is exactly how people think about entrepreneurialism or startups, which is kind of my, in my DNA. So uh, it's known that energy uh, moves a lot faster and efficiently through a networked as opposed to a hierarchical approach. So I think that's something that we have an opportunity to continue to do, and that led to my recommendation. Uh, next slide. And I shouldn't say it's my recommendation, it's our recommendation, but it's one that I chose that really resonated with me uh, after the group's work. Um, and it's about social mobility. I'm sure many of you know that PSU is an engine and has been for years that creates positive futures for so many. We have recently been measured and declared a top performing school in advancing the social and economic mobility of our students. This collective impact, it's not just good for them, uh, it's good for our city and our state. The vast majority of our students come from and stay in our state. The cost of creating that kind of continuity and stability and generation potential and localizing it is very high. We're doing that job. We, we are resilient. And we have entrepreneurialism in our DNA. We're perfectly suited for this task. We're already doing it. What we can do better? We could intentionally fortify our strengths, organize around them, clearly communicate them, and claim our space as our state's economic and social mobility engine. We could quantify better the massive conveyance of societal benefits that this produces. 
Uh, we can also seek and need to seek new financial models and partners so that what if we were compensated for this service to society in a new, a new way? Our ultimate product is an engaged, empowered citizenry that creates not just solutions, but wealth wealth and abundance that is more equitably shared than we could have ever imagined. Thank you. Our next recommendation is around becoming a sustainable learning organization. At this point, when we readily refer to the lessons learned of 1918, 1930 and 1968, it's abundantly clear that one lens is not gonna be enough. Um, we, need to, we need to think beyond the decadence of disciplines in order to address the volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world that surrounds us. In becoming a learning organization, PSU considers full spectrum futures. We unite around mission values and a transformative vision. We really get to know each other better as, as a community and as an institution, and we become a little bit more fearless as our tagline suggests. Instead of focusing on other institutions and their choices and identities, we dig deep and create ours in a truly unique way. We explore ecosystems of experiments, pilots, and innovation. We center circles of small, small circles and community, and the, the guiding principle is equity, collaboration, sustainability, and agility for the future. There is no one uh, official, the future. It's not actually even a tense, forgive me for going into grammar. It's a time and it's a plural time that is in fact about world making, which we now embrace as a learning organization. So of the many possible recommendations we sorted through, the one that in, in the immediacy spoke to me is really around um, this concept of to be a future ready PSU, we really have to get better at collaborating both internally and externally. And I actually think of that as how could we advance uh, as a goal towards excellence in collaboration versus excellence in competition. So to me, collaborating boosts new possibilities, new po combinations that are signature and essential evolutions to be, for, to be ready for whatever the future holds for us and holds for our region. Um, to be clear, this may involve some risks and we may have to get clear on what risk and what type of risks we're willing to take, but it also offers up an opportunity for deeper learning and humility for all of us. Um, and we are known for collaboration in many ways, but we have more learning about how we can and do this better. And I would argue that collaboration allows us to create more with what we have. And, and lately, you know, I grew up on a farm and I've, I've thought about the historic role that silos played. And as we all know, higher education loves silos. But I can tell you uh, firsthand in the Midwest, silos are coming down all over the place. And I hope that would be the case here because I, I believe that collaboration may be a path forward as we kind of think about um, our role in a bigger landscape, which is regional resilience in higher education. Hi everyone, this is Andres again. And the recommendation that I chose to highlight in part because of my multiple minoritized identities and also because of the professional work that I do has to do with a reckoning. The fact that Oregon's history, particularly its racist history, plays out at PSU in structural ways to this day. We have to, it's imperative that we create, that we be creative, right, and expansive and look at potentially disruptive approaches that help us to reconcile our inequity and equity issues at Portland State University. What would it look like, right? So, so this is part of the future's lens to imagine, right? What would it look like if PSU engaged in a truth and reconciliation process, for example? One of the things that I would love to see our university move forward in is how to center an intersectional approach in policy change that does not create or the conditions around a future that allows for these structural dynamics to continue to determine life chances and life outcomes for not only its employees, but also the surrounding community, right? We have to envision and we must prioritize a future where PSU commits to a more eth ethical and equitable framework, in part because 
of what's happening, right, in our present political moment. So if you will, um, next slide please, um, join us in a moment of silence and solidarity. Before I, uh, before we move into that space, I do want to just mention the fact that a moment of silence is not enough, right? we have to think about the ways in which we are plugging into the kinds of social actions that are happening around the world and in this country and in our city as well. So I invite you to, in this moment of silence, to think about the different ways in which you could get plugged into the protests that are happening around the city, that you please resource organizations that are aimed at protecting Black life, and that you continue to have conversations with your closed, your closed ones and your community as well to think about ways in which we can envision that future where PSU and the world commits to a more ethical and equitable framework. I also want to mention very quickly, because I think that this is also important, the names of folks who have recently been murdered by police. Folks like Tanisha Anderson, Brianna Taylor, George Floyd, Jason Washington, Tony McDade, and most recently, Manuel Ellis. So please, I'll bring us back, but let's engage in this moment of silence right now. Thank you. I wanted to read before we transition to the next slide, a quote that I think is particularly instructive right now by the wonderful Audre Lorde, who says, for the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. They may allow us to temporarily beat him at his own game, but they will never enable us to bring about genuine change. Racism and homophobia are real conditions of all of our lives in this place and time. I urge each one of us here to reach down into that deep place of knowledge inside herself and touch that terror and loathing of any difference that lives here. See whose face it wears then the personal as the political can begin to illuminate all our choices profound and so important that we read Audre Lorde's words from a future's perspective, right? Calling forward the kind of future that when we do this ethically and we center the voices of indigenous black people of color, right? Um, those words can help us create worlds. And the world that I want to be a part of and that I think many folks on this call also want to be a part of is a world that prevents and does not allow for the violence that we continue to see against communities of color persist. So I wanna push us to the next slide, um, which is a reminder for our third and final webinar in this series, although by no means a 
final point of our conversation. Um, we will be hosting Dr. Ruha Benjamin, who is an Associate Professor of African American Studies at Princeton University and is the author of Race After Technology, Abolitionist Tools for the New Jim Code. That will be hosted on Friday, June 12th from 12 to 12.45, and there's a link for you to register now. One um, perk that will happen with that is that there are 55 books that will be distributed to participants um, through random selection. So we really, really, really want you to come to this session and learn more about some of the threads that you know we've begun to unravel here as part of this conversation. Thank you. Terrific. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, I'd just like to throw in a, a couple of ideas about scenarios myself, just by way of, of wrapping up um, today before we get into questions. Um, and that has to do with um, how we ultimately um, use and view those scenarios that we came up with. The part of the futures exercise of using scenarios is to encourage people to imagine what if we knew that particular future was going to happen, any one of the four that Sheila uh, came up with and shared with us, how would we plan for that particular future? And in reality, good futures thinking is about what would it look like if we planned for all four futures? And what opportunities might we find in preparing for a given future that we might not have thought of any other way except for playing with these possibilities. Um, that's what makes it interesting. My experience using these scenarios is that every time I've done it, a few years later, what ends up happening is that some part of each one of these wacky scenarios actually has come true. <laughs> and it's about building that collective imagination, that collective intelligence, that collective agility. The work in producing scenarios is not really just coming up with the good stories, although they are good stories. And as Sheila said, they make us laugh, they make us cry. The work of doing it, the, the benefit of doing it is the agility uh, that it gives us. Um, and the cohesion that it gives us and the anticipatory power and energy, but also agency that it gives us. So that's why we do scenarios. And what we really want to do is invite um, all of you listening um, into the process of thinking about the future with us, thinking about the future of PSU and growing our campus-wide dialogue in the same way that we've been having so much fun um, doing internally. How do we grow our campus-wide capacity to answer the question, what does it mean for PSU to be future ready? What does that look like in all its many interpretations and voices and positions and identities? What does it mean for our community, our beloved community, um, to really be ready? So um, with that, I would love to invite um, some questions um, from the group. Um, do we have any questions? I do not see any piping up. Um, I think Kurt has some collected, but I can't access them. So maybe uh, Kurt could. <laughs> why don't I ask them on behalf of the group? So the first question is, have any of the scenarios you presented today been shared with or endorsed by the PSU administration? I can start and then other people can pipe in. So. It was part of our charge, as we talked about in the last webinar, it was part of our charge to work together to prepare a list of recommendations for President Percy at the end of the academic year. And I just want to, you know, in a moment of solidarity with everyone listening, if you're part of the PSU community, it's been complicated, right, the last few months. So we, like all of you, have been adjusting to a new reality and working from home and juggling all the things and you know, slamming into walls occasionally when the thing we thought we were gonna do isn't gonna happen that way. So in the midst of all of that, we continued to gather and support each other and explore. And also, by the way, listen to lots of futures talk because there's a lot happening. The, the futures enterprise writ large globally is very busy right now, as you can imagine. In, in a lot of exciting ways. Um, we, we, these have not been presented to or endorsed by PSU as yet. 
Um, we will be, we're calling a meeting, we're actually working on getting it scheduled right now as planned to sit down with President Percy as a body and share both these scenarios and our recommendations um, with him um, and have a thoughtful dialogue. But I do know that um, PSU administration as well as um, PSU Faculty Senate have been so um, supportive and interested in what we're doing. And I think I, I, I feel a great sense of um, dialogue um, that is beginning to happen in some new ways that as a 20 year member of the PSU community, I, I've not experienced before. So uh, my, my answer to the question is not yet, but we're preparing to. And they're starting, they're start, starting point. They're not intended to be a, an ending point. Uh, we need all of you who are listening to this call and all your colleagues to join us before we would ever say we made final recommendations. But what do others think about that question? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. I mean, we, as a collaboratory, we've, we assembled a really amazingly comprehensive list of recommendations, let's say that. And I, I think what we've just tried to capture here is each of us on the panel simply chose a recommendation that most, perhaps most resonates and speaks to us each individually. And I think that's sort of the beauty of the sort of collective power of cognitive diversity <laughs> uh, when having these really interesting future looking conversations. So, um, so I, I hope people will take these as sort of, uh, for each of us as individuals participating in this conversation, these are things that spoke to us. And I think our challenge then as we assemble the, the bulk of recommendations to the institution and to provide to President Percy is like, how then do we have a process that distills those down? And so that we can begin to understand what are some of those perhaps concrete or actual next steps that will take us to the future that we want. So that's what I would say. Anyone else? I'll pipe in a little bit. Um, this is just a beginning of a conversation and it would certainly be our hope that uh, there's a way to continue to propagate this kind of work with these types of interdisciplinary conversations where they're not only had by people with certain titles, they are literally held across the campus. Um, and, you know, so I'm hopeful that we will, you know, just become a, like a continuously improving um, organism, right? Um, in terms of how we, as an organization, face challenges. Um, yeah, there was one other thing I wanted to say about the recommendations too. Like, I'm, I'm speaking for myself. Uh, when we first sat down, many of them felt so out there, um, really crazy. And I don't think any of us, at least not me, could have imagined how quickly they became so relevant. Um, and it's a function of two things. Yes, it's what our world has done in that time period, but I also think it's what happens when, when you engage with people with heart and compassion and respect things that I heard that I thought might have been outlandish as I got to know people and understand their perspective, um, I actually rally behind some of the things that I had once thought crazy. And I think that's the beauty of this type of process. Thank you. I, I just wanted to chime in too. There was a, another question that just came in the, the, the chat box specifically about how to get students involved. And I wanted to address that and just to express again my gratitude for being involved as a doctoral student. And I, I couldn't agree uh, more strongly that we absolutely need more students involved in this process. And, and another thought that I wanted to share is that many of us are in fact exper experiencing different states of collapsed despair. And honestly, getting involved in Foresight's thinking has been like an antidote. It's been like watering a little plant that really needed water <laughs> to steal an idiom that Laura is so fond of saying. Um, I, I, I look forward to extending this conversation to students and to um, having their agency voices and empowerment join us uh, in, this, in this collaborative effort because without the students, uh, it's all kind of pointless from my point of view. Students first. We are working on a few um, sort of traditional academic learning lanes. So some, some classes, some certificates, those kinds of things. But 
what's more important to me in the way that this is talked about um, in the futures world is to say, how do we build organizational foresightfulness, build this throughout the organization so that we really have lots of ways for people to dialogue, to connect, to learn. And so we'll It'll be, we've been experimenting and playing with a lot of those things in the collaboratory, but next year we're looking at really expanding those. Um, and so Sarah, thank you for the question. And I, I think uh, one of our, well, several of our collaboratory members are very connected to students. Uh, our, we've been, we've had, we had several big plans for how to engage students in some deeper dialogue about their ideas about the future that have been a little COVID interrupted, but we're get, we, we have deep intentionality about um, spending lots of time with students to hear their perspectives. And I can tell you as a person who's been doing this for the last few years, I have presented very similar information and done some, you know, learning activities with students. And um, my experience has been A, they love it, and B, they get really mad that they're not getting more of it. <laughs> so um, my sense is our students are, are all, our students know they're living in the future. Um, and they, I think giving that this language, this framework, this launch pad to really explicitly saying, you know, if you're 22 years old right now and you're getting your undergraduate degree, the arc of your life and your career is going to include profound challenges and opportunities the likes of which we can scarcely wrap our brains around at this moment how do we quote unquote educate students um, for that kind of uncertain landscape that's coming and i think that's where the really creative work comes in um, less about filling up a satchel of knowledge and more about helping to prepare students to participate i think creatively and with agency in just this rapidly changing world. So I don't know if others, Andres, Todd, Angela, thoughts about that involving students? I just think yeah. you've kind of given us a, maybe a, a next charge a little bit in terms of also where we have a real role to play in, in educating the future. So like, you know, I mean, part of it is the education of, you know, getting the societal outcomes we want, yeah. which means we need everyone to be more future ready and future equipped. So I think this is a, would be a great uh, opportunity for PSU to provide some leadership there. Yeah, and I, I would just jump in very quickly to say, you know, as Laura mentioned about um, some of our projects, and one of them was a student survey um, where we wanted to solicit, you know, their feedback and their ideas around that very question. And so I've asked that we please um, include a link to that survey in the chat so that you can also distribute it to your students so that, you know, they have the opportunity to really drive this conversation. So um, if we could get that in there, that would be awesome. Thank you. Uh, just a couple more minutes. Are there any other questions that we might be able to answer uh, just with the minute we have left? We are very interested in who's on the call with us today. We will be having a, a little survey uh, of, that's available and evaluation of this session, which I think is gonna be posted in the chat. And we would just love to hear from you, um, what brought you here today, what you're interested in, and if you'd like to be involved. Um, we'd also love to just welcome you to our home base website, uh, where we've lots of information about the, all the different meetings that we've had, the futurists that we've met, the kinds of projects we're engaged in. And um, we will continue to be populating that site with lots of other information as the year winds up. But um, I think, uh, I don't see any other questions right now. Any, anything else? Um, we appreciate you. And uh, we want to welcome you to the future and welcome you into our community of uh, futurists at PSU. Um, futures practice is wide open. Uh, there's never been a more important time to learn sort of new skills uh, for facing a new age. So thank you so much, everyone. And thank you to all the panelists. It's always a pleasure and an honor to um, be part of a, a, any event with all of you. So um, thank you and, and big thanks to all the rest of the collaboratory members. You can learn about all of them on the website. Uh, thank you to PSU and all the tech folks behind the scenes uh, helping to make this happen. Uh, thank you all so much. Have a beautiful day and uh, Black Lives Matter. Let's go, let's get out there and get some work done. Thanks everybody. <laughs>